Hey folks, I'm Sully. Depending on the community you know me from, you might know me as Dan Sully, Dan Sully 123, Sully's Cafe. Uh, I've, I've been around the block. I've been, you know, putting content out there quite frequently uh, in the past. I've got over 6,000 videos on this YouTube channel alone, uh, 6,800 plus to be precise. Uh, it, but lately I've been consuming a lot more content than I've been creating. But uh, recently the YouTube algorithm has been feeding me uh, beans. As a matter of fact, a lot of reactions to Americans trying British baked beans. Um, myself, I find reaction videos quite entertaining. As a not so well-traveled Rhode Islander, uh, I generally watch reaction videos of Brits reacting to U.S. stuff, Americans reacting to British or European this video was inspired by three specific YouTube content creators. I want to give a shout out to L3WG Reacts, The Jolly Channel, as well as Joshua Wiseman. So uh, the Jolly Channel had some American teens react to British break beans recently, and uh, to which L3WG, or Lou, uh, reacted to that. So I myself am no stranger to British baked beans. I've tried them before, my lady and I really enjoy them, but these Heinz cans are extremely rare in the United States. I really have not seen one in stores in probably two years. So when I saw the internet reacting to British baked beans, uh, I wanted to I wanted to get in on it. So I actually decided to cook mine from scratch and found a recipe from Joshua Wiseman, who I frequently uh, like his food videos. So I was inspired by all three of those to get there and get this done and out on the internet. Uh, a lot of my efforts predate the terms content creator or influencer, but if you followed my blog and podcast in the past, Sully's Cafe, Sully's Cafe at the Green Room. Uh, also, I run a vlog with my lady. We call it Two Peas in a Prov. Um, so I'm out there. I've been inspired to create some content again. I know it's not the highest quality. I do what I'm I can to put my imposter syndrome aside and, and make some content. Uh, I hope you enjoy. All of the links to the original creators will be in the comments below. Give it a, the like, the subscribe, all that happy horse shit that people talk about. Just do so, it. So, one of the main components of beans on toast is toast. So that's going to require some bread. So, this is 500 grams of bread flour, 250 grams of water, 7 grams of instant yeast, 100 grams of sourdough discard, 10 grams of salt, I'm using pink Himalayan because that's what I had on hand, 15 grams of sugar, the original recipe calls for 20 but I found it a little too sweet, and 60 grams of butter. This will all turn into the loaf of bread from which I will make the toast. Starting by adding the water, sourdough, discard, and flour together and mix until you get a dough. Now that a slightly shaggy dough has formed, we're going to let this rest for 30 minutes and then we'll come back for a few more ingredients. Alright, I let that dough rest for 30 minutes and now I'm going to add the salt, sugar, yeast, and butter and knead it for about 3 to 10 minutes until a nice elastic -y dough forms. In with the yeast, the sugar, the salt, and the butter. Now it's time to get to work. The kneading is now done. I'm going to let this rest for about an hour, then form a loaf and put it in the loaf pan. Here we go. Alrighty, it has been about an hour. The dough has doubled in size. Now I'm going to form a loaf out of it and then drop it in that pan to rise again. So I will take another short video in a second here. Stretch the dough into a rectangle. 
fold it lengthwise onto itself in thirds so you get a little seam underneath and then you roll it up once you got a general loaf shape you plop it in the pan and let that rise until it's popping out the top all right uh, let it rise for about an hour it's not quite there yet I needed to take over that whole pan so give it another hour see you in a bit alrighty the bread has risen a bit in the pan it's not exactly where I'd want it to be but it's getting kind of late we're gonna throw this here in the oven for about 40 minutes and see what we get alright it has been 40 minutes baking at 350 degrees and we've got our loaf here this will be the toast for beans and toast. Let's get it out on the cooling rack. Alrighty folks, I know beans on toast are normally made with that blue can of Heinz beans, but those are not particularly easy to find here in the United States, and I am more a DIY or home cook, so I have got some great northern beans, also known as navy beans. Uh, I am going to cook them in the Instapot, and then I will make the British style baked beans from those. The recipe I am following from Joshua Weissman calls for uh, three cans of navy beans. Uh, Google says the equivalent of that is about a half cup of dry beans per can. So we're going to be making one and a half cups of dry beans in the Instapot for the next hour and 15 minutes. We'll see you on the flip side. All right, covered that cup and a half of beans in about a knuckles deep of water. And I want to pressure cook. And I have to go an hour and a half, 15 minutes. Make sure the vent's sealed, Sully. There we go. Alrighty, the beans have pressure cooked and rested for about 45 minutes after. We're going to vent the steam here. Nothing coming up. So there are the beans. Now I've got to prep the sauce that those are going to be cooked in. So we're going to put the cap back on this for now, keep them warm. That was awkward. Over here, we've got the ingredients that are going to go into the sauce. There's a cup and a half of veggie stock. The recipe normally called for chicken stock, but my lady doesn't eat chicken, so we're going with the veggie stock. Three quarters of a cup of water, a tablespoon and a half of tomato paste, three and a half tablespoons of brown sugar, a third of a cup of ketchup, it was supposed to be three cloves of garlic smashed, but I just had one giant clove, and two sprigs of sage fresh from my garden. So, we're going to add the stock and the water and all the ingredients and bring this up to a boil. Alright, so this has been simmering for about 15 minutes. I'm going to fish out the chunks. So here's the garlic and the sage coming out. Chuck of garlic in there. Definitely smells tomato-y. Now we're going to add in the cooked beans. And give it a good stir. See how we're doing there. That's definitely thinner than we'd like. 
So I'm going to raise the temp a little and add in a bit of cornstarch slurry. So this is one tablespoon of cornstarch and one and a half tablespoons of water. I'm going to add about half of that to start. We're going to bring this back up to a boil to activate that and see how thick this gets. Alrighty folks, the beans are almost ready, so we're going to take some slices of the bread that I made last night, get that toasted up for some beans on toast. Finally. Alright, we got our slices of toast ready to go. I'm going to butter these up with some nice Kerrygold butter, and then we'll be ready to dress. Just going to put a big heaping portion of these beans on the toast. This is how it's looking in the pot. It's a little thinner than I was expecting after adding all that cornstarch, but I didn't want to go any more. So I did touch this up with some more salt and pepper just to taste a bit. Admittedly, I have definitely had beans on toast before. Uh, but we can't always find the Heinz beans around here, so I went on the internet and Joshua Wiseman had a uh, baked beans breakfast from England, and we're going to try it here. So this was nice and toasty, but it's a little sogged now. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally worth the wait. It is a little more complex than, say, your canned Heinz beans, but uh, I do like to chef it up at home. So, thanks for watching the video, and have a good day. So, it was so good, I and I was so hungry, I didn't talk enough about it. I just shoved it in my face, and I actually didn't want beans running down my beard as I was talking about it, but... Really delicious, well worth the time to make it from scratch. Uh, the complexity of the sage really comes through. Uh, I like using dried beans instead of the canned beans. You still can get a nice soft texture, but I think that it's going to last. The leftovers will last a little longer. Uh, I came back and topped it with an egg. So definitely, if you have the time, try to make this recipe for yourself, because it was really good. It wasn't so bad, right? It's okay. I can still put that out there. Maybe someone will dig it.